not competing, but these things are still pretty cool. So. Yep. Um, this one is called "What Is One to Do." Sorry, it's not memorized. I mean, what? Okay. What is one to do when all you can envision is an impending visit from the cops inquiring about the latest teen statistics? The nightmare is the same every time, a few brief knocks, followed by the shuffling of stony authorities inside. With an accusatory glare until the fates of those I've been tasked to care for and have ultimately failed, proven by his preface. We found this letter stayed red with regret. It has been addressed to you and only you. Beware its contents. We're sorry to inform you we found one hanging blue in the face from feeling blue for so long without any air to breathe. We're sorry to inform you we found one lying in their own bile. The dosage was too high. And Tolerance was never high enough. We're sorry to inform you we found one drowning in pools of their own blood. The incision said more than her words ever did. My brain finds it impossible to digest the whore that's been thrown at me to process my negligence and ultimate betrayal. The letter I hold in my hand holds the final testaments from those who in their final moments expected me to be there. The finale to this tragedy of which I tried so hard to make a comedy is shaking in my grips and ending without notice. I finally draw the strength to look down on my death sentence and begin to read the very first sentence that hurts more than anything else. Dear Peyton, you are not to blame. There was nothing to do for me. I was a lost soul anyway. Anyway, thanks for trying to find me, I guess. But how could this even be remotely true? It's got to be against some rule that there's nothing to be done. It doesn't work like that. But I guess mental illness doesn't really care about what is or isn't the norm when one moment there's laughter and then deathly silence. What is one to do when your friends are so far down the well that Lassie just can't save the day like she's used to? When sorry nights and bleary days have passed by, spent drilling into their heads that they are pretty, that they are loved. When years have dragged on and from the first day you've completely run dry of new things to say, but the onslaught continues. When every day, Someone makes sure to remind you that they, they, that they don't want to exist. They still suffer through it all as a favor to you. What is one to do when every plea to put down the knife, untie the knot, becomes incessant and genuine peer pressure? When every syllable that leaves your lips is thrown out the window with every precise pinprick of a blade on the inside of her thigh? When hours on the phone wrapping your words around the receiver like a pair of warm arms go unfelt through the unabashed sobs? When the moment she walks out of your house and is out of your sight, the smile will fade and she'll continue to die on the inside without witness. What am I to do when any day now I expect a notarized resignation letter officially withdrawing from the resistance of suicide campaign? You know, if you repeat something enough, it loses all its meaning. At least that's what I was told when I reiterated my mantra of I love you, I'm here for you. And yet some words, no matter how much they are said, still leave their scars behind, still invoke the same prayers, still hold the same meaning. They mean that you can't keep a body afloat if it isn't breathing, that sometimes CPR can't keep a heart beating. What am I to do when even I've started to crack but can't piece the broken fragments back together with glue? What am I to do when there's no one left to try and stop me, even if no words can reach us that far deep. Maybe no one listened because I am a bit of a hypocrite, though I fear the letter I sometimes write letters of my own. There are bruises around this one's neck, scratches on this one's thighs, and tears running down another's face. My lack of assistance roughly translates to enabling these behaviors. Dead bodies are piling before the world's eyes. They claim their voices were silent. Rather, they were deaf to the screams that I hear every day. And yet, what is one to do? I now pose the question to you in the form of a letter. 